we all remember TNA. If you don't remember TNA, all you need to know that in 2023, it has become Impact and it's been around a long ass time. I mean, everyone talks about WCW, total non-stop action, kick that's ass when it comes to lengthy reigns. It also meant in the early days, randomly, ex-WWE stars would just turn up and go, oh, hey, I'm here now. And then usually they totally vanish. Hello, my friends. My name is Simon for What Culture. Thank you very much for joining me. Hit that subscribe button for a dose of joy. And this is 10 Forgotten TNA ex-WWE stars. Number 10, Paul Bearer. So we start with a doozy, because I don't remember this one. I had to go double and triple check. But yeah, Paul Bearer, at least for a little while, was on TNA. And this is likely because he was so synonymous with the World Wrestling Federation and as The Undertaker's manager that you actually forget that he did have a career before that. I mean, he was Percy Pringle, and then Vince McMahon saw him and went, oh, now you're going to be Paul Bearer. And it wasn't until I was like 25 and I was like, <laughs> that's a pun. If only I was joking, it took me a long time. It happened way back when, when TNA had first become a thing and when Paul Bearer was taking a break from WWE before he would return at WrestleMania 20. And yeah, he walked out and he was Percy Pringle III. It was sold as a game changer and served as a cliffhanger to the end of one of their episodes. But I think we mostly did this to try and get some publicity because afterwards, well, he did nothing I can tell you about. That's right, he came, he saw, he got some money. And he left. Number nine, Vader. Fresh off some big runs in Japan from 1999 to 2002, Vader did indeed debut for TNA, got right into the thick of it. But he was tagging with Dusty Rose to take on the Harris Twins at the 34th ever TNA show. That's much bigger than you'd think it would be. Vader was also mad at Vince Russo's Sports Entertainment Extreme Stable, which yes, stands for sex because it's just the worst idea ever. And after Russo had told Rose, you gotta get a partner, well, he went and got the Mastodon. It did get a massive reaction from the crowd, though. When Vader gets his hot tag, he does run wild. And even though this only goes six minutes, it's kind of all right. And somehow, Dusty Rhodes still finds time to bleed. Vader would also return years later in the promotion when he took on Bram. I think this was during a time when Vader was like, listen, I will come in, but I'm not going to lose. So we have plenty of shenanigans. But hey, still happened. Number eight, Lex Luger. So this was another one that I had forgotten about. I suppose it ties into the title. It also underlines the fact that way back when, TNA just didn't know what it wanted to be. And if you'd been in WCW or the WWF, they would reach out for you, which is exactly what they did with Lex Luger in 2003. And the reason we don't remember this is because it only happened once, and Lex teamed with Jeff Jarrett to take on AJ Styles and Sting. And from a 2023 perspective, that is crazy. Clearly Luger wasn't that impressed with Styles because he totally no-sells his entire offense. And even after he gets clocked with a baseball bat, he's like, man, who cares? I mean, it does get him pinned, but he kicks out as soon as the referee has gone one, two, three. I think Luger knew what he was doing. It also feels like the idea is to tell current fans, oh, look, AJ is on the same level as Lex Luger, even though Lex Luger doesn't treat him like he's on the same level. This was a massive faux pas, and just another little window into the fact the promotion never treated Styles right. A different video for a different day. Number seven, Jim Neidhart. So it's Groundhog Day again. Nope, don't remember this either. Another one shot deal in 2009, which I'm very sure Jim Neidhart would have got paid well for and more power to him. I actually think we could have done more with this and it's a shame that we didn't. Because we could have used all his experience and filtered that down to the younger members of the roster. But instead, nope, in for one match and out again. This was during a story where Jay Lethal was all like, oh man, my generation is better than Hulk Hogan's generation. Which is when the Hulkster did bring in somebody from his timeline. And it was Jim. And amazingly, Neidhart won. Amazingly, Lethal also took on Tatanka during this period, which is properly bonkers. And it all ended when Hulk Hogan and Jay Lethal teamed up anyway. I mean, what a waste of life. Number six, the Road Warriors. So this was Hawk's penultimate match on American TV, which is quite a sobering thought when you do think about it. But on the 26th episode of TNA, he got back together with Animal, and I tell you, they rolled back the years. Because they just confronted the Harris twins after they were beating America's Most Wanted and totally kicked their ass. And honestly, if you were ever wondering why the Legion of Doom was so popular, you get a little snippet of it here. They are great. Hawk even does a cross body off the top, although this was leading to the Road Warriors, Jeff Jarrett and Dusty Rhodes, taking on Triple X and Vince Russo. The less said about that bit, the better. It also meant that Hawk and Animal did lose here. We never saw them again. It's kind of a shame. 
many ways it was their swan song. Number five, Mike Awesome. Though of course, eventually, TNA did an ECW invasion angle. They would have been sitting around and they would have talked about the idea. And as always within wrestling, nobody can help themselves. The leader of that whole thing was Mike Awesome, which did make sense because he was synonymous with that brand. And he was feuding with James Mitchell's Disciples of the Church, or whatever they were called. And just when you were like, ah, oh, this is going somewhere, it stopped. Awesome had one match, he got a win, and then he went back to Japan where he was the gladiator. It was also the last we'd see of Mike on American television until he did come back for WWE's One Night Stand in 2005. And just goes to show, pretty much everybody had a run in TNA, even if it was super duper short. Number four, Spike Dudley. So this just made sense. I mean, the Dudley boys were a mainstay of TNA where they were Team 3D. So if you are gonna be there a long ass time, why don't you ring up your fake brothers and go, oh, hi, do you wanna come and have some fun? This is exactly what happened between 2004 and 2007 because Spike Dudley as Runt would show up. And it basically ties into the fact that TNA had just got a television deal. And they were like, well, I think we need to get recognizable faces on the damn show. Who can we get? Sadly though, even though they did stand together at Victory Road and Lockdown in 2006, aside of that, they didn't really do anything to note. I mean, he did have some fun big man, little man contests with Abyss. Look at me, I'm trying to find other things to talk about and I have nothing. By 2007, he was done. And once again, the real error here is that we didn't use him more. I mean, just team him up with Bubba Ray and Devon all of the time. People would have liked it. Number three, Chris Canyon. Chris Canyon was underrated. Like if you talk to many stars of 2023, they will all say that they learnt a thing or two from Chris and that nobody ever gave him his due. His story was also a tragic one, but when TNA did bring him in in 2005 as a ghost from Raven's past, I tell you, this guy had his working boots on. He was like, I'm gonna show all of you. This went down a turning point for the world title and is absolutely worth your time and proves that Canyon was more than just a catchphrase. Although that was a good catchphrase, I mean, who better? This was also one of his last appearances before he did pass away in 2010. All of that is really, really sad. Keep the memory alive. Number two, Jake Roberts. Jake Roberts in the mid 2000s was not having a good time. He was doing a lot of shows over here in the UK. If you wanna say he was struggling with some personal demons, I think that would be fair. He got a lifeline back across the pond with TNA in 2006, who once again were looking for those familiar faces, when he was booked as the special guest referee in a Monsters Ball match between Abyss, Runt, Raven, Samoa Joe. That went down a bound for glory and sadly it didn't really go to plan because Jake gave Runt a DDT and it didn't look that good. Although then he did give one to Raven too. Yeah, well, that's a little bit better. He also had a brief cameo in 2008 when SoCal Val and Jay Lethal had their wedding, which yes, we are gonna talk about in just a little bit. But none of this matters anymore because Jake Roberts has turned his life around as you can see in the documentary, mostly thanks to DDP. What a flipping hero that man is. Number one, AJ Lee. Which brings us to the big one that nobody remembers, AJ Lee and TNA. Now an often shared clip on social media is AJ when she was super young, meeting her hero Lita and just crying and crying and crying because she's so happy. And never forget that's what wrestling's all about. Make you warm and fuzzy in your tum-tum. Lee totally knew what she wanted to do as well because come 2008 at TNA's Hard Justice pay-per-view, who is in the crowd posing as one of Jay Lethal's family members? I mean, it's AJ Lee, you should have been able to figure that out. This was kind of legit too, because AJ and Jay were dating at the time. And as for Lethal, well, he was about to have a tuxedo change match with none other than Sanjay Dutt. And no, I'm not making that up. And the reason his nearest and dearest had to be here is because Sanjay, as we hinted at earlier, had ruined his wedding with SoCal Val. That's why they were wearing the nice suits. I don't know, you tell me. Still, you do see Lee on the screen, which is totally forgotten about today, until I just brought it back. Know of any other ex-WWE stars that made TNA appearances that we do not remember? Make sure you let us know in the comments below before you like the video, share the video, and subscribe. Then head over to whatculture.com where you can read yourself some articles. Make sure you follow us on social media, or culture, WWE, and Simon316. More important than all of that, click one of the videos on the screen just to see what happens. You're just gonna get another video. My name is Simon Watt Culture. Thank you very much for watching me as always. You take care of yourself. See you soon.